This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. One of the key things that God will do is to give you instructions. God's instructions, your way out. Sometimes we are asking God, Lord, why are things not getting better for me? Why am I not seeing the kind of progress I want to see? What is holding back my harvest? What is holding back what I'm expected to receive or what I'm expected to manifest? Remember that God's instructions are your way out. Whenever God wants to do something in your life, he gives you an instruction. Whenever God wants to do anything in your life, he gives you an instruction. The scripture established in Romans 8 verse 14 is that as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit will lead you in the direction of God's instructions. The Spirit will lead you in the direction of God's instructions. Because it is by instructions we know what is expected of us. It is by instructions we'll find direction. It is by instructions that when God gives instructions, it's because he wants you to do something. Is because this is going to be the way out of the situation. God gives you instructions with an intention to see your compliance. He wants you to comply to what he has said, and that is how things begin to change. But let's look at scriptures this morning where God gave people instruction and how that instruction took them from a place of pain from a place of shame to a place of harvest. If you truly want to see more manifestations, you follow God's instructions. Sometimes it may not be convenient, but it's necessary for your next level. Sometimes when God gives you an instruction, something to do, it, it may not be convenient, but it is necessary for your next level. Maybe instruction concerning your prayer life. You. Maybe the person doesn't have a very good prayer life, they don't pray, and then the Spirit of God quickens them in their spirit to begin to pray one hour every day. One hour can be challenging if they have not cultivated the lifestyle of prayer. Oh, one hour is so long, why would I pray for one hour? Why not 10 minutes? Why not five minutes? But that instruction contains in it what it takes to break forth. If he said he wanted to be praying for one hour every day, he began to walk towards that. So whenever God wants to move you forward, he gives you an instruction. And it's important we value the instructions that God has given to us. It is important to value those instructions. If you don't value the instructions that God is giving to you, it simply tells me or tells God, that you don't want to go forward because you're going to go forward by instructions. You're going to go forward by instruction. What is the Spirit of God saying? What is the Holy Ghost saying concerning this, concerning that? What is the Holy Ghost saying? He's going to give you an instruction and he expects you to follow the instruction. Instructions are strategic to ministry, to business, to relationship, and to life. If you don't receive instruction from God, what is going to be the basis of your faith, your actions, and your decision? So I'd like to look at this scripture here. In, in 2 Kings, let, let's start from the Old Testament. In 2 Kings chapter 2, there was a problem here. In 2 Kings chapter, 2 Kings chapter, 2 Kings chapter 4, sorry, from verse 1. In 2 Kings 4, from verse 1, he said, and a, certain wife, uh, and a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, 
your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant fears the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to become, to be his slaves. The creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your, your, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Verse 3. Then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. This is an instruction. She has a problem. She came to the prophet, and then an instruction is given. When you have an expectation, learn to be sensitive if God have an instruction that will bring the expectation to pass. When you have an expectation, be sensitive to know if God have an instruction an instruction for you that will help bring that expectation into manifestation. If God have an instruction for you, he expects you to follow the instruction. You know, sometimes we are praying and then God give us instruction and we'll keep praying. It is good to pray, but if you're praying about something and God gives you an instruction of what to do, you go ahead and do that. You go ahead and do that instruction. The harvest is in the instruction and the obedience towards that instruction will lead to the manifestation of the harvest. The harvest is in the instruction. The manifestation of the harvest will come from your obedience towards the instruction. And here, the man of God said to her, go borrow vessels. Now, in the natural, this may not really look like the right thing to do because what actually brought her to see Elisha, the man of God, was that the husband was in debt. The husband borrowed. So imagine Elisha telling her again, go borrow vessel. And she said, oh, I don't want to go into asking anybody for anything right now. I don't want to go asking people to do this or do that for me. Can I say this to you? Divine instructions was set the stage for supernatural happenings. I want to say that again. I said divine instructions was set the pace, was set the stage for supernatural happening. If there's going to be supernatural happening, it's because of divine instructions. It's because of divine instructions. Divine instructions will lead to supernatural happening. If you want something good to start happening around you, obey what God has said to you. So it's here, the man of God said to her, go borrow verses. Now in the natural, she could begin to argue and say, I don't want to do this, but obedience is the heart of your faith work. I said, obedience is the heart of your faith work. You can work effectively in the things of the spirit without a heart of obedience. So the instruction was go borrow vessel. When God gives you an instruction, he expects response. Whenever God gives you an instruction, he expects response from you. When God gives you an instruction, he expects response. He expects response. And what is the purpose of response? The purpose of response is to achieve the fruits, the harvest connected to that instruction. So Elisha said to her, go borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not just gather, do not gather just a few. No, the, the, these instructions have details. There is details in this instruction. Go borrow vessels, but don't borrow few. Because there was a, an intention that heaven has concerning her situation. Not only to bring her out of debt, but to bring her into a life of overflow. God didn't just want her to pay her debts. 
and come out from the situation that the husband has put the family into. But God wants her to pay the debts and also have an overflow in her life. And that was why the man of God said, borrow not few. You see, when it comes to following God's instruction, you have to be careful that you don't neglect the part, that uh, you don't neglect one part and do the other part. And then you're expecting the entire harvest. No, you cannot expect the entire harvest when your obedience is not full obedience. When your obedience is not full obedience, you just obeyed one side and they didn't obey the other side. Now, can I say this to us? When we are passive towards divine instructions, we'll create distractions for our purpose. When we're passive towards divine instruction, we'll create a distraction for ourselves. God said, do this. Oh, I don't think I can do that. This is not the right time for me to do that. But he or she may not know the benefits connected to that instruction. Sometimes God wants to do something and he just drops a word in our spirits. He just says something to us. Don't allow what has happened in the past to distract you from what God is saying. Don't allow what has happened in the past. Don't allow the, the mistakes, you know, whatever that has happened in your past, don't let it flow into your future, flow into your present, your present, and then interrupt the future. There are a lot of people who have allowed their past to obstruct their future, interrupt their future, and he hinders their future. But they just allow what happened to, oh, this thing happened to me 25 years ago. This happened to me 20 years ago. No, can I say this to you? The word of God said, behold, I will do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Part of the instruction that God has given to his people is not to keep remembering the past, especially a toxic past, a negative past, a past that does not hold a wisdom, understanding. And God said, remember that the former things. And there are a lot of people who are tied in their past and they continue to talk about the past until they couldn't see the future until they couldn't see the opportunities that God had for them. God had great opportunities. Something wants to happen. But they're so connected to their past that it's difficult for them to move forward or for them to be free from where they are. The Spirit of God will show you what to do, but obedience is the heart of your faith work. Obedience is the heart of your faith work. Obedience is the heart of your faith. So there are many things we don't go to ask me. Go do this. Go say this. Go do that. Sometimes it may not be convenient for me, but I just have to say what God has called me to say. To be a prophet of God, there is a great demand on you. Because sometimes people may not like what you have said to them. People may even reject what you have said to them. But your job is not to obey the people. Your job is to obey the God who sent you to the people. Our problem most times is that we want to be good in everybody's book. We don't want people to criticize us or speak ill against us. We will prefer people to not to speak ill against us or speak evil about us or say something wrong about us. We prefer that. And then we we'll, are pleased to disobey God because we want to be with the people. You see, the problem is that when you always stand with people, the same people will turn against you. Yes, believe me. But when you always stand with God, he said he will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. That the best position to occupy is to be in the position of the word of God. The best side to be is to be on the position of the word of God. What is the spirit of God saying? What is the Holy Ghost saying concerning this? What have the Spirit of God revealed to me? If you are not listening to God and to His Spirit, it will be difficult for you to get to your destination. If you are not listening to God, if you are not listening to His Spirit, 
will be difficult for you to get to your destination. You cannot get to your destination in the flesh. You can only get to your destination by the leading of the Spirit. I want to say that again. You cannot get to your destination by the flesh. You can't get to your destination in the flesh. In the flesh, there are limitations. In the flesh, there are opposition. In the flesh, there are circumstances that have potential to create destruction. In the flesh, there is resistance. But in the spirit, you see, and then you know what to do by the supply of the spirit that you're receiving. In the spirit, you see, the Bible said, walk in the spirit, that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, walk in the spirit. When we walk in the spirit, we connect with the will of God. We connect with the purpose of God. We connect with the agenda of God when we walk in the spirit. There are a lot of people today that want to see manifestation. They want to see supernatural results. But you don't see results in the flesh. You see results by yielding, by yielding to God's ways of doing things. That's how you're going to see results. You see results by yielding to God's ways of doing things. There is the God's ways of doing things. There is how God wants you to do it. There is how he expects you to do it. So instructions is the way out. You come out by instruction. Let's look at this scripture. This scripture is uh, in John Gospel chapter 2. So in John Gospel chapter 2. In John Gospel chapter 2, I read from next one. He said, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come now. That's a lot there. How many people will be able to withstand Jesus saying next to them? Without getting offended? Would I be mad? How many people can withstand hearing this from Jesus? Woman, what does your, con what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Someone will pick offense at this. Someone will get angry. Why would you tell me that? Because I came to you for prayer. Because I came to you to help me. And then look at what you told me. Mary understood that the situation is possible in receiving attention. His response would not distract me from his ability. I know he can do something. And Mary didn't speak a word back to Jesus. I said, why are you saying that? I am your mother. Why are you saying that? I'm a Christian before you. Why are you saying that? I didn't know more than you. Mary never said that. Mary never said that. And look at verse 5. John Gospel 2 verse 5. His mother said to his servant, whatsoever he said to you, do it. Mary went to his servant. Mary went to the servants that are there. Whatsoever he said to you, do it. Can I say this to you? It takes understanding to navigate from crisis and to come into breakthrough and break forth. It takes understanding to navigate from crisis and break forth into the harvest. It takes understanding to navigate. If she has no understanding, she would be there quarreling with Jesus, shouting at Jesus, complaining. But she already have an expectation. The importance of expectation is that it secures your focus in the right direction. The importance of expectation is that it secures your focus in the right direction. There are a lot of people who want to see great things happen in their life, who want to see mighty things happen in their life, but they have no expectation. Number two, they don't like taking instructions. So it's going to be difficult for someone with that expectation and someone who doesn't like taking instruction to prosper 
in the things of the spirit. You can't prosper in the things of the spirit without the revelation of the will of God. You can prosper in the things of the spirit without the revelation of the will of God. The revelation of God's will will set the foundation for supernatural happening, for supernatural activities. There are many things that I couldn't have been able to do today if I go to the flesh. But as I continue to stand on the word of God, the word continues to work. So I'm here to say this to you next morning. When you follow God's instruction, that is the way to experience supernatural victory. What is his instruction? His instruction for you in this season. His instruction concerning what he's telling you. God's instruction puts you in a position of advantage. You cannot be in the position of advantage without following God's instructions. His instructions are your advantage. There are certain manifestations you are not going to see in your life until you do what Jesus is asking you to do. And here Mary told them, whatever he said to you, do it. And Jesus gave an instruction. Fill the water pot. They could have said, oh, what does water got to do with what wine? No, we're not going to obey. We're not going to follow that instruction. We're not going to follow that instruction. We're not going to listen to you. But the instruction is fill the water pot. Fill the water pot. Because when God gives you an instruction, he has brought in an atmosphere for your own transformation. When he gives you an instruction, he has brought in an atmosphere for your own transformation. Pay attention to God's instructions. This is your way out. I don't like this kind of success of someone succeeding and then they come back, you know, succeed and go going up and going. I don't like it. I like success that is stable. And if we're going to have stability of success, then we'll be following what God is telling us. We'll be following what the Spirit of God will be telling us. If you're following, you're listening, and you're following what the Spirit of God is telling you, it's going to bring you to a place of the harvest. Instructions from God is not an abuse. It's an opportunity to unlock the harvest. Instructions from God is not an abuse. It is an opportunity to unlock the harvest. You cannot unlock the harvest without knowing where the harvest is. There's a place where the harvest is right now. And the Spirit of God will begin to show you the way to go, how to go, and when he wants you to go, following God's instructions. Following God's instruction. There is miracles in following God's instruction. There is signs and wonders in following God's instructions. Your obedience will change your story. You have the power in your hand to change your own story. And how is that going to happen? By hearing what God is saying, by doing what God is saying, and by acting, believing what God is saying. Hearing what God is saying, believing what God is saying, and doing what God is saying. What is the Spirit of God saying right now? What is the Holy Ghost saying right now concerning your job, concerning your career, concerning your ministry, concerning your business? Listen to God. Listen to God. Follow his instruction. Don't be afraid of following God's instruction. If you do it by faith, you will see miracles, signs, and wonders. Don't be afraid of following God's instructions. Don't be afraid of following God's instruction. If you do it by faith, you're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. Whenever God wants to do something, he will give you an instruction. Learn to value the instruction. Learn to put your faith in that instruction by acting that instruction. You know, many years ago, while I was a student in college, in the university, uh, there was a particular lecture I've not attended due to one or two things I was doing that period. So I decided to say, okay, that day I was going to attend that lecture. And the Holy Ghost told me, that the lecture will not hold. <laughs> I said, kid, I want to go to school. <laughs> and I'm going to go to school. 
So I took my bag. I went to school. Got to school. I saw the 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 car of the lecturer. <laughs> and I said within myself, look at the lecturers that are in the school here waiting for us. The Holy Ghost didn't say anything back to me. Remember, the Holy Ghost told me the class will not hold. So that day, my country was playing a soccer, a soccer with another country. When the match was over, my country lost the match. The man came out from where he was watching the match, entered his car, and drove home. The man didn't teach us. The class did not hold. The Holy Ghost said, I told you that the class will not hold. Imagine if it was something that could have led to death. Will I come back and explain to people what happened? Sometimes God will say, go through this route. Go through this way. Don't try to argue with the Spirit of God concerning what he's telling you to do. Be more sensitive to the Spirit. Be more sensitive to the voice of God. The days ahead of you will be productive, effective, and glorious if you follow the leading of the Spirit. The days ahead of you will be glorious, will be beautiful. If you follow the leadings of the Spirit, if you don't follow the leadings of the Spirit, you may end up creating crisis, issues, and problems for yourself. Pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. Pay attention to the Holy Ghost. Stop using your, your sense knowledge. Stop using your sense knowledge to treat the things of the Spirit. Look at things from the Word of God. What is the Spirit of God saying? Whenever sometimes God will give you this instruction, do this. Then he come back, do this. Then he come back, do this. All of those instructions is given to you is building up something in the spirit that will lead to the manifestation you're looking for. Sometimes he tell you, do this. Next minute he tell you, do this. The more you follow those instructions, the closer you are to what you're looking for. And can I say this to you this morning? Instructions from God is your way out of whatever you're dealing with. No matter what the situation is, in your finances, in your marriage, in your job, in your business, in your career, find out what the Spirit of God is saying and be committed to that. To be committed to that is a decision. Because the enemy will come with so many things. Remember in Mark Gospel chapter 4, when the word was sown, sown, the sower sowed the word as the word was sown into the heart, what happened? Immediately the devil came and took the word away. Sometimes God will give you an instruction. The enemy come and take the instruction away. And then you're praying. Why is my situation not changing? If you learn to follow God's instruction, you're going to have the God kind of result. And there are a lot of people watching right now. This is the season to pay attention to what God is saying and make that your priority. If you listen to God, you will have uncommon habits. Divine instructions are designed to bring you out of your situation. If you're watching this service and listen, let's give God thanks right now. Father, we thank you for this meeting. Thank you for the word we have received. We're going to obey you, Father. We're going to obey your counsel. We're going to obey your instruction. We're going to obey the things you're telling us. But in the name of Jesus, we'll receive grace to do your work, to do your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching today. Receive the grace to be a doer of divine instructions. Receive the grace to become a doer of divine instructions. Receive the grace to follow God's instructions. Receive the grace. Father, we thank you right now. We give you all the praise. I pray for you. Every yoke to be broken. Every limitation to be broken. Any form of delay. I release the harvest in the name of Jesus. I speak peace over your life, victory over your life. I stand with you in faith and call in the expectation you have this season. Call in the harvest you have this season in the mighty name of Jesus. May your needs be met. May your bills be paid. May you continue to have supernatural miracles. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Uh, today is Thursday. We're going to take our offerings today. Hallelujah. 
want to give an offering, you want to give a child, whatever it is we God will need you to give, let's just provide. Follow in the name of Jesus. Approve of the finances of the people. Approve for supernatural miracle signs and wonders in their finances. In the name of Jesus, may God meet your needs supernaturally. May God change your story in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for supernatural harvest. Receive increase. Receive increase. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And we say, Amen. Come do your giving by going to finishwalktv.com and slash giving. Or can go to PayPal to and teach you at gmail.com. But when we back here on Sunday, 8 a.m. Eastern uh, Central Time and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can get our books by going to Amazon.com. There is greatness in you. And further things you need to know about your future is available on Amazon.com. And how to run a global business from any location is also available on Amazon.com. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Till I see you on Sunday morning, don't forget this. There is greatness in you, and Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye, and have a wonderful experience today.